Hello everybody, this is Daryl at HudsonsCustomMachining.com This is a 1906 Westinghouse vane oscillator. And I know a lot of you that subscribe to my channel or may just happen to be tuning in have seen the vane oscillator and understand how it works. But I actually I'm showing you this to show you something else. On this vane oscillator, We'll switch it off for now. On this fan, you hear those centrifugal switches closing in that motor. Uh, I think everybody's aware of the brushes on the back of the, uh, in the neck right here. There are uh, brushes that ride against a, a slip ring inside the neck here. And uh, just wanted to show you that because I think a lot of people understand that. But I also know there's a lot of people that may have never seen a Robbins and Myers lollipop before, or at least the inside, uh, the inner workings of the of the lollipop. Uh, of course, you've got the counterweight down here, and you've got this disc that is uh, pushed from the wind coming off the blade to this side, and when it gets so far around over here, it hits a reverser. It flips it this way, and now the wind coming off the blade push the, pushes the fan head over to the other side where it hits against another stop down here and flips that counterweight the other way, flipping the lollipop the other way. So that's how the fan oscillates. But I'm working on some internal parts of a fan similar to this. Now this is a DC version. This is a DC lollipop here. Uh, you can see with the brushes on the back here and the commutator here. But I know a lot of folks have maybe seen a lollipop but have not seen what's behind the neck tag of the lollipop. So if you remove these two screws that holds the neck tag on, it gives you access to inside the neck. <clears throat> and you can see here <coughs> that there's some slip rings and brushes ride on these slip rings. And I'm gonna to try to turn the fan head. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. So you can see as this fan head comes around, and my flashlight just give out. Maybe you can see how that turns in there. See how that rotates. Okay, my flashlight is going to quit on me, so I don't know how well you can see that. But see that rotating in there as I turn the fan head. And that rides on those, on those brushes in there. And there's a bolt that comes up through here. You've got your slip rings. And then there's a, uh, a couple of bearing races in here with little small ball bearings in here. And this comes on up and you've got a little brass uh, collar right here that... Uh, helps cover this up. It's a decorative piece and it also works as a dust, uh, uh, sort of a dust shield to keep getting dust down in here to where these bearings are. Okay, now we're gonna cut here. And if you'll bear with me just a second, we'll go out to the workbench. Sorry, I do not have editing software to cut all this out. So now we're here at the bench <clears throat> and this is what that piece looks like. <clears throat> Here's one that's assembled, okay? So I had a customer send me two of these that have problems. This one has a broken bearing race right here. And you see the ball bearings in there. This has got a piece broken out of here, so we're gonna make a new bearing race. And there's another set of bearings down in here. See those bearings down in there? And this race right here. So what ha what's happened on this one is the original race was broken half in two. I think you can see the the brake marks right there. Where it goes right across here and right across here. This race was broken half in two. And somebody JB welded it back together. Well, that'll never hold because there's a, a good bit of pressure on this bearing race with the whole weight of that fan head and uh and all of this oscillating back and forth and it it gets jarred and there's a little bit of uh pressure there 
what happened this this shaft was bent on here and uh, sometimes I can straighten them out sometimes I just have to make a new shaft this one we were lucky enough we put it in the lathe and put the dial indicator on it over here I think it was that one that we used <clears throat> And, uh, and I got this, uh, I tapped around on it until I got it running within just a couple of thousandths of an inch. And uh, so now we're ready to put this all back together the, again. This is going to fit onto here. And we've got those ball bearings that are going to fit down into here. So this is the uh, bottom race. This is the upper race. And then we've got... Uh, Here's the new race that I made. This is the old, the broken one. And here's the new bearing race that I machined here <coughs> in the shop. And this is gonna fit onto here, get screws on. And then here's that decorative brass piece that I showed you in there when we were looking at the fan a while ago. This piece is gonna sit in here like that. The brushes that we saw back there a while ago ride tangent to the, uh, instead of the, the, the brushes pushing against the face of the brush here, the brushes ride tangent <clears throat> to the slip ring. And you can see here where the brushes have been riding on here. So we'll polish that up, get that cleaned up a little bit. Oh, and the two head wires coming from the motor go down through this hollow shaft here. And they come out, one comes out here at this hole. <clears throat> and another wire comes out here and they get soldered right here. And that's how you get your continuity through there. So I'll go ahead and stop this now. We're going to put new ball bearings in there. These have got some flat spots on them. And we'll, go, we'll get all this put back together. So I just wanted some of you to see. Maybe you've never seen uh, what one of these looks like uh, inside the lollipop fan. So that's all for now. Y'all stay tuned. I'm going to do a part two of this after we get it all back together. And uh, we'll see y'all later. Please subscribe. <laughs>